All right, we're live. What's going on, man? Uh, chilling in Myrtle Beach, man. Feeling like Kenny Powers. I hid the beer cans and the hookers in the closet. <laughs> you know, doing this shit here, it made me think of a movie that I watched when I was a kid. I really liked and you might be young for it, but it was called Bump Up the Volume. You know the flick? Yeah, yeah, I know it. So Christian Slater, when he was a cool motherfucker, people my age, almost 40, hold on to remember when Christian Slater was cool before he was directed DVD guy. <laughs> but um, this motherfucker was like a, uh, like a, a high school uh, student who was like doing pirate radio. And you know, that's like, this feels like, like guerrilla podcasting, you know, like doing, <laughs> doing like under the radar shit where we can talk about whatever we want you know the the man's thumb's not on us we just want to say welcome to the slight nocturnal show presented by kill cobra studios our sponsors tonight are uh viper blitz nvidia and ring the bell of course and tgn thanks to all our sponsors i'm doc holiday i'm joined by bo machado tonight Today is December 1st, 2016. The last month of 2016 is here. So, tonight we'll uh, kick off with a story that Bo found earlier about some vets. You want to go ahead with that? You there, Bo? Hey, bud, can you hear us? Seem to be having some technical difficulties here. Hey, Bo, are you there? Yeah, yeah. You okay. were you were gone on me for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, we were, we were, I was talking about that story that you found about the uh, the vets. If you want to go? Oh, yeah, that. yeah. That's good shit. Yep. Yeah. So I think it was two thousand veterans who drove, walked, got to Standing Rock, however the however the fuck they could get there, to uh, to actually build a human shield around the uh the the protesters there now tell us about standing rock in case people don't know uh so standing rock is a, a sioux reservation i or, i believe yep and uh the dakota pipeline i think it's a billion dollar oil pipeline that's going through and it's going across sacred sioux land and so protesters have been trying to uh stop this from happening and the police have been uh, using tear gas, flash bombs. I, I think a lady had to have her arm uh, amputated because of a bomb that went off near her that, that messed up her... Uh, you, had you heard about that yet? Yeah, I think I heard a little bit about that, yeah. Yeah, so apparently it messed up the muscle and stuff in her arm and they had to amputate. Um, and another lady might be blind from the tear gas going off, however it went off around her. Um, so these veterans, they, uh, they uh, have gotten there to try to form a human shield around these protesters. You know, I was thinking it's funny. You can camp out all night long at Target or Walmart for Black Friday, but God forbid you camp out to do any kind of peaceful protest. Yeah, I agree. Es especially if you're a fucking Native American. I mean, what are, are they going to pass out disease blankets again? I think we've fucking done enough to the Native Americans. Like, we really have. Like... What we've done is an atrocity to those folks. So, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Um, so, uh, definitely props to the uh, to the veterans who have found their way there. Um, hopefully, the protest can remain peaceful, and the police can uh, turn off the guerrilla warfare tactics. Yes, um, indeed. Yeah, don't need any more bullshit. Right. All right, so, so and every, everybody's safe out there. You yeah, know, be please safe. be safe. So I guess another uh, big news this week was uh, the Smoky Mountains were on fire there in Gatlinburg. Dolly, right. Bo Dolly World it got up in smoke, basically. Yeah, they saved Dolly World, though. Like, it, it didn't get it. Oh, yeah? Did, no? Yeah, Dolly World is like, uh, is like, it was like on the outskirts of everything. And from my understanding, they saved it. Now, they lost a few cabins and things, but they didn't lose, like, the park or anything. Like the main facility? Yeah, yep. That's crazy. I mean, that, that so, I saw a picture today on uh, Facebook where uh, a gal I know was just there, I don't know, four days before the fire, and then she had a there. She had the picture, you know, that she had took, and then the picture of the same exact place, you know, and it was just all burnt through. It was amazing looking, the difference in four days. 
You know, I yeah. used to work well, they... for the Forest Service too, and I've experienced those big forest fires up close and personal. You know, they can be very scary things. Oh sure, and the, I, I saw I read somewhere the wind was anywhere from forty to eighty-five miles an hour. Yeah, so that fire, you know, so... that can jump those on the firefighters. They'll they'll dig those fire lines so the fire can't jump, and with winds like that, that, that they can jump those fire lines. So. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's hard at work there, and so far, from what I understand, there have been no fatalities there either. So that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. I know there's been a yeah. lot of places, that homes destroyed and stuff like that. So oh, so sure. We wish the best of luck to the the fire crews out there and the safety of them and the the people there involved. Yeah, National Guard and uh, I, like I forget all the people who are there, but yeah. Uh, hopefully, all those folks can stay safe and. And save everything they can. I, I think I read Gatlinburg had actually saved the actual downtown, the, like the historic downtown part. So they'll be able to rebuild kind of around that again. So that's good. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's kick off and get into sports then, real quick. Okay. I know you got okay. plenty to talk about there. So yeah. Um. So I figured we lead off. Just I don't want to talk a lot about the NBA. It's so early in the season. Okay. that there's not a lot happening right now. But I did want to mention my man Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City. He's been freaking brothers every way like MJ. He's in an Ice Cube song. <laughs> so this fool messed around and got his fourth consecutive triple-double. And we'll actually go into, go into December averaging a triple-double on the season. And it's the first time anybody since the big O Oscar Robertson did that. So I thought that was worth mentioning, you know. Um, it's not every day some shit like that occurs. I think Robertson... He was playing in, like, the 60s, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's been a long time. It might have been the 50s. The basketball story in him, he's angry right now that I don't know that better. <laughs> uh, one of the big stories, you know, in general, going on right now, uh, mixed martial artists are looking at unionizing. Did you read? Did you see this story? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. So, like, uh, some, and some big names are kind of leading the way. But it's, uh, I made a note for myself, so I remember the, the big names here. Uh, GSP, uh, Cowboys Who is currently Cerrone. not fighting. Uh, you don't have to fight to unionize, though. True enough. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone, TJ Dillashaw, Cain Velasquez, and Cain's uh, the heavyweight champ still, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, and then I wasn't sure. I don't know Bjorn Rebney, but his name was one of the five main names listed, and they formed the Mixed Martial Artists Athletic Association. Um, and they state that their aim is to protect fighters' rights and to uh, to basically stand up for fighters who, you know, if they were to just be let go by a company because they were standing up for their own rights, would basically be uninsured and broke and beat up. What rights? I, I guess, did you find out anything like what, the, what their rights they feel like? I did not right? find out exactly what they're looking for, but it sounds like what they're looking for is similar to what, like, NFL union kind of things get as far as their players' union, like health insurance. Are um, they worried because if they lose a bunch of fights in the UFC or the WEC or, you know, Bellator, that they just, you know, they get bumped off the roster? Yeah, they could just be kicked loose and then there's nothing for them, you know. And and those guys get broke the fuck up. Well, I mean, it, you know. I don't know. I guess there's two sides of that. You know, as as a from a business side, you know, or say you ran a fucking a coal mine just for, mm -hmm. you know, and you have eight guys that work in it and five of them are productive and three of them are constantly like hurt or injured and it's the same three and they just they can't come to work on time like what do you do you do you fire them of course you do you get rid of them you know so i say think it's the same thing in the ufc or you know belts or whatever if you got dudes that constantly lose and aren't making you money it, wouldn't you think it would be time to cut them loose yeah maybe so <clears throat> and that and that may not be the whole gripe the gripe too may be like the the Reebok sponsorship with UFC and the money that took out of fighters' pockets. I think that was a um, bad decision. I, I want to go on record as saying I think that was a horrible decision. Yeah, so so there's probably a lot of different things. It didn't really specify other than, you know, they were going to try to stand up for fighters' rights. I'm sure more will come out as they become a, a larger thing. And my guess is look to do some collective bargaining. So, but with those big I names don't see behind people like like Dana White and those folks, even I mean, do you think they deal with them? Well, at some point they may not have an option if, if all their best fighters 
join this union, what are they going to do? They would have no choice but to deal with them. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what unionizing is all about. I wonder if there'll be an initial thing, you know, from these big companies where they say, you know, if you join the union, don't expect to fight, you know? Yeah. I mean, they could try to do that, I'm sure. I mean, because you do see and that, you know, from time to time. I've been involved oh, yeah. in agent in companies and, you know, I've worked to play like where they told us, like, if you, you if you become part of the union, we're going to fire you. And then because, you know, you know, and you will deal with the aftermath, but they didn't want no part of that shit. Right. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, lots of places want to keep the union out. Um, I think they're going to have a hard time, though, because they do pay their fighters so little on the whole. Um, so I think fighters are probably going to kind of get behind it. Do you have a number? Like, what's an average, what an average fighter, you like, gets paid? I do not have the average number for that. Um, I know that they get paid, like, they, they can earn knockout bonuses and things like that. But let me see if Google can tell us real quick. You know, I do know that, like, fighters don't earn, like, a salary. Fighters get paid per fight. Um, yeah. And they have, you know, so basically if you pay somebody, I'll just say a ballpark figure. If you pay a, a, a no-name guy, you know, not a big-name guy, who goes in and wins, and he wins, say he wins $12,000. That may seem like a fuckload of money to people, but, you know, it may be six months before he fights again. So $12,000... Has to last this guy. Yeah, so it says the average UFC fighter, if you're if you're new to fighting and everything, you basically would go in and you fight, say, two fights in in twelve months, and say so you go one and one, you're only going to earn about twenty four thousand dollars. You know, that's that's below poverty line. You know, if you well, think about not. A, I mean, you got to pay for your camp unless oh, somebody yeah. sponsors you. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, so that's just not I'm a lot of at, money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, it's not. Twenty four thousand. If you got a wife or if you got a kid, even if you if you just have a kid, you know, twenty four grand is twenty four grand. Spread over twelve months, it's just not a lot of money. And you're right, you're like you gotta pay, you gotta you know you gotta pay the people that are training you. You gotta pay to eat. Right. And it's not like you can eat ramen noodles and fight in those kind of competitions. These that just shit don't may work. Be now. So this is what BJPen.com had an article about this back in 2013. And in 2013, which is a few years ago, so this, like I said, it may be higher now, but in 2013, um, UFC events, the highest guaranteed pay on any card was around $30,000 typically. And that was going to be the highest pay on a card. And it said the median average wage for a top 15 fighter in the UFC was 30500 bucks a year. That's just not a lot of money. No. So because of that, I think that you could see the union really take, you know, a, a stronghold with these folks. So I'll I'll just go ahead and predict. I think some things that might happen if they do unionize, you might see top fighters get paid less money. Um, I mean that's just gonna probably happen right off the bat. If there's some kind of union thing, um, if the money, so if you if if you're trying to evenly distribute the money, you're gonna see top guys get paid less money. So and maybe they're willing to take a pay cut to help the you know the younger guys in the sport come up. You know. Live a little that better. or maybe it maybe it goes somewhere into the union into retirement or medical expenses or something yeah. to where even though it's a cut it doesn't feel as much like a cut it never fails i read once a week about how somebody that used to be some kind of fighter whether it be boxing or even pro athletes as far as you know the nfl these jokers that made millions and millions of dollars and they they don't have a fucking dime to their name you know they live oh, yeah, in the broke. system just bro and that's just fucking sad like you know, yep. there's a show on HBO called Ballers where uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson and I can't I never forget, I can never remember that. It's a great name. show. Rob they, Corddry. Uh, yeah, they are they're basically that's what they're trying to do. They're they're money managers and they're trying to manage these guys money for the afterlife of the NFL. Now, that show is centered around the NFL, but that's what the main strive is for these two guys. They want to. They want to help these guys last, you know, have a future after the NFL, you know, because every you can't play in those, you can't do contact sports like that. Fuck, you can't. Your body just won't last that long. And the I MMA think the world, average career is three years. The MMA world is, you know, there's people. They, I think they probably tend to fight longer, but that's pro I bet they fight longer because they ain't got no goddamn money. So. Well, yeah, they got no choice. They're they're staying hungry, like literally staying hungry. 
So, I mean, in the MMA world, these guys, most of them, you know, no offense, but they're not like, you know, ex, you know, F Fortune 500 company executives. They, they don't have bukus of education behind them. You know, most of those guys, if you, you know, every time they play one of those stories, it's some kind of like hardship story. Every single one of those guys, it's not like they're coming from money. Oh, yeah. You know, and they just got, you know, they got, they don't have a fallback thing. So I think money management is a, is a big deal for these people. And even M M and MMA, according to the International Boxing Club of New York, the average uh, average fighter's career is only about one and a half years, or or just under four fights long. Wow. So, so I guess if you're not a champ, you ain't gonna you're not you're not gonna make it year after year after right. year. Right. Right. So. You, you and you basically do. You have to win your way up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, we better move on if we want to get to cover other things All right. tonight. Yep, yep. So uh, after that, I was wanted to hit on um, just real quick. Indiana was in college basketball. Uh, they're five and one now. They knocked off uh, number three North Carolina. And earlier in the year, the first game of the season, they knocked off then number three Kansas. So two pretty good wins out of their out of their uh, five wins. And of course, their one loss is to Fort Wayne. <laughs> so. Not sure what happened there, guys. Didn't show up for that game. <laughs> but uh, again, it's ba with basketball. We're so early in the season. There's yeah. no sense in really getting a lot into that. Um, so I thought it may be more important to kind of dive into uh, championship weekend and college football and what's going on as far as potential Division One playoff kind of fallout if certain teams lose this weekend. All right. So. Some of the some of the big things going on. Um, Ohio State's number two, and they're not even in the Big Ten championship game. So, wh what are your thoughts on that? I know you love it. <laughs> well, who's in the Big Ten championship? Okay, so Wisconsin. Because there's Penn not State. a whole lot of games this weekend. It's very limited. No, yeah. I think yeah. the season's on pretty much on it, and it's over, right? Yeah, yeah. We're just at uh, we're at championships. Uh, Champion, this championship weekend for uh, for conferences. After that, we'll start to move into bowl season and then the playoffs. Yeah. So who is Wisconsin and who who's playing? And Penn State. And so my question to you here is: so if Wisconsin wins and Ohio State owns the head to head on Wisconsin, Ohio State probably stays where they are, right? Yeah, I think if Penn State beats Wisconsin, you have a different situation. Right, because Penn State owns the head to head. Yeah. Does it matter, though, that Penn State and Wisconsin are two lost teams, whereas Ohio State's a one-loss team? Why? Well, I guess I don't understand why Ohio State's not playing in that game. Because they lost the head-to-head to Penn State, and they're in the same division. So Penn State, by... Uh, so if Penn State wins, I say that Ohio should be excluded from the playoffs. You think they should? Yes. Because if hmm. they win their championship game... Penn State does, and they've already beat Ohio State. And, but you know, I think you know they deserve they deserve a chance, a more chance to be in the playoffs than Ohio State does. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that that's a valid argument to make because they won head to head against them. Now, I don't think that uh, will happen. No, I, well, I don't think so either. I think Ohio State's safely in that in the championship or in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I think Penn State could still jump into there with a win, or Wisconsin could. Especially if Clemson loses. Now I don't know chances of Virginia Tech beating Clemson. Probably pretty slim. Um, but more likely, Colorado, who is another one of these two lost teams, knocks out Washington. Then you got a whole group of two lost teams that say, you know, why not me? Because yeah. Colorado can then say, I knocked off Washington. Why can't I be up here? Uh, either Wisconsin or Penn State. Either one claims that conference title, and they can say we've won this conference that has Michigan, Ohio State, and and the other one of those teams in it. Colorado's lost to Michigan and USC, though, right? I think those are the right. two losses. Right. But those are both, you know, if you talk about value of losses, I mean, those are both solid teams to have lost to. Yeah, they are. And they were not – I guess Michigan, I thought – I think it was like more than 10 points. But I know the USC game was close. I think it was right. less than a touchdown. So. And I then think... Oklahoma's another two-loss team. 
Oh, like, fuck Oklahoma. Boomer soon or nothing. <laughs> I fucking bet one of my best friends is a huge Oklahoma fan. Shout out to him. But, yeah. Ugh. I think um, Alabama's biggest chance of losing is coming up to, um, on Saturday. Florida? I think so. Florida's got uh, I think. Florida's, if, I, I don't think they're going to beat them, but I think they got a solid chance at winning. So I don't know, man. And if that think happens, so. I think there's going to be a lot of contention for fucking... Well, actually, you know what? If, Florida, oh, yeah. if Alabama loses, then... Um, I don't know. That would make there would be no undefeated teams left except for Western Western Michigan, Western Michigan who yeah, but they're, should they don't scream play anybody. at the top of their lungs that they should be in there. Well, then they should play in Michigan. I mean, they should add some of these like really good teams. Well, if they let them team. play in the playoffs, they'd play them. Well, so yeah, so let's talk about that. Why don't they have a real playoff? And I know we've talked on our, on an earlier show about this. Why don't they have a real playoff versus this kind of bogus? top four teams and obviously it's you know this is a year that's a prime example their top four teams aren't necessarily better than the top 10 or the top 12 or the top 16 so why isn't there a larger playoff they should take the top 20 teams i'm looking at the rankings right now most mm-hmm. of the top 20 have less have three or, or or less losses except for auburn who has is eight and four and you know, like they should take that those twenty people and let them play. You know, well, the division two. So I I went to uh, Shepherd, it's Shepherd University now, Shepherd College when I attended there. So shout out to Shepherd. Uh, they play California University in the division two playoffs this week. Division two playoffs is comprised of twenty eight schools. So they have twenty eight schools that that go through these playoffs. So. If Division Two can do it, and I think even Division One Double A, yeah, they have a playoff system has, that's bigger yeah, than that. Yeah, they got like twenty four, twenty six. You know, they got a certain number of teams. I don't know theirs as well because I didn't go to a college that that was part of that. But um, but uh, so because my alumni is there, I, I know Division Two pretty well. And twenty eight teams, if they can do it, then why the hell can't regular D one do it? I don't know. I don't know what the big stop is, unless there's some big, big like. Just holdups because you know because of the bowl system. Well, it's but, what it, it used to be bowls because they didn't even have the fourteen playoff. They, but they could use the bowls as the as the playoff games. There's they got right. enough they got enough bowls to fucking shake a stick at now. Like I mean, they got a bowl for the fucking pansy flowers. Like I mean, that's yeah. literally they got tons of bowl games. They oh could yeah, the poinsettia bowl. Yeah, they could use the fucking bowls as the playoff games. Abs- they could yeah. easily, and then they could they could generate more money by adding more bowls because there'd have there well, probably is not enough to go around. If we look like minimally, they should take so the NFL is comprised of twelve teams that make the playoffs top six from each uh, the AFC and the NFC. So minimally the top 12 teams in college football could do it and they could set it up the same way. I mean, they could just take the, and, and you, you know, really after 12, you could say, ah, do you have much of a gripe? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but minimally they should be doing that many. Uh, yeah. At the, at the very least, I'd say 12. I would like to see 20, you know, cause then you get a lot more college football. Packed into well, it would be more season. like March Madness. And it would be you, more like what they get out of basketball. And I think you would see – I think if you had 20 teams, you might start seeing more teams or different types of teams from different conferences win big games. You know, oh, you yeah. might see – I'd like to see Alabama play some people that they never fucking see because they don't play in their conference. You know, I'd like to see, right. you know, Alabama play Colorado or Alabama play Oklahoma more than like once every five years, you know. Yeah. I'd yep. like to see that shit. I'd like to see Clemson play, you know, fucking Louisville. That'd be a good fucking game, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. So, you know, I yeah, just... Yeah, there's I a lot of those. I think it's time for them to advance and get a bigger playoff system. It ain't a money problem. They just generate all kinds of money, you know. Well, it is a money s- problem, though, because they like the way the money's feeding right now. Well, they just need to set it up and different. They just, that's what change. they need to do. They can do it. If the Division the other, 1 AA ball's doing it and Division 2's doing it, they can do it too. There's obviously well, they gotta, a way to do it. Yeah, well, and they got to look at shrinking their regular season. They would have to max these teams out at a 10-team at a 
10 game regular season instead of these 12 and 13 game regular seasons That's because fine. they would need those other games to the playoffs you know what i mean i think that people would be per- perfectly fine with that you know Oh, right, and that's one of the things I, that I know D2, they only play like 10-game schedules, and then they're in the playoffs. So, if you, Especially, I think teams, I think schools would be okay with that, especially if you had like a 20-28 game playoff system, you know? Yeah, yeah, because they're, they're still going to, if, if they can win, they're going to get those other gonna games. They're going to get those other games, no matter, you know, if they can get in there and win, yeah. I think it would make recruiting more, you know, there'd be, I think it might divvy up the recruiting a little more, you know? Come to oh, our sure. school, you know? Well, it gives schools like Boise, um, else, like San Diego State's been decent in the past. You know, some of these, like, especially West Coast schools, Stanford. it would give those schools. Well, yeah, well, Stanford's been solid now. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, well, this year they're a little bit down, but they've been solid for a while. They're, they've Harbaugh made them kind of a pack, pack of 12 power. Um, so I just but, like to see um, a bigger playoff system. It's fucking time. It is fucking time to do it. I mean, we, yeah, we made I mean, big strides by getting the playoff system we have now. Now it's time to add to it. Right. Other than tradition, there's no reason not to. I think th- there's more call for playoffs, bigger playoffs, than there, you know, people hated the BCS. Fuck it. I hated oh, yeah. that mother. I saw more teams that even I didn't like get screwed because of that bit. A computer. Like, what the fuck, you know? So, <laughs> so. But I agree. So does, I think... Um, I think if Penn State wins, there's definitely a big, uh, there's a big conversation that needs to be had that maybe Ohio State doesn't deserve to play in the playoffs. So. Yeah, well, I think that, well, here's what I think will happen, though. I think that Ohio State's in, and maybe if Washington gets bumped out, if they have a real close call against Colorado, or maybe Clemson gets bumped out, if they have a real close call against Virginia Tech. Like, I think Ohio State being number two, and their schedule's over, they beat Michigan, in that double overtime game. Um, so I think that they're safely in the playoffs at this point. What happens uh, if Washington it, loses? Who comes up? That's what I'm wondering. Um, so I think probably either Wisconsin or Penn State, the winner of that game. I think it should be Penn um, State, hands down, if they win that game, right? I yeah, think, I, w- I would think I would so think because they have a win over Ohio State. So Michigan could try to make the argument, but Michigan lost to Ohio State. So. I think, yeah, if Washington loses, then I think it should be Michigan's back in there, and Penn and if Penn State wins, and Penn State's in, so you lose. So Ohio you would kick State. Ohio State yep. out. I would kick Ohio so State out. So what's Penn what's your rationale winning. for that though? Because Ohio State won the head to head on Michigan. Because Penn State beat Ohio State. Yes, so if, but why should Michigan State, jump them though? If Penn's cause if Washington loses, they should take that spot. They're a better team than Washington. They've had a heavier schedule. So if Washington right, loses... Why does Ohio State go... Michigan's not playing just like Ohio State. So again, my question is, why does Michigan jump Ohio State who they lost to? I, because... That, now listen, so if Penn State wins, that mm-hmm. that, that should bump Ohio State out. If why? Washington lo- if loses to Colorado, Michigan bumps back up to number four. I don't see Wisconsin coming up over Michigan and coming into the playoffs. Why Why does Michigan come over Ohio State is my question. Ohio State, the Michigan and Ohio State don't have anything to do with each other. Ohio State, if Penn State loses, Ohio State should automatically get bumped out. Well, that's out. my point, though. Ohio State's not going to automatically get bumped out. The lower well, I know they won't, but that's out. just what I think should happen. Because they've oh, okay. they've lost to Penn State. Now, they, uh, what I say and what happens are two different fucking things. It ain't going to happen that way. If it's logical in a college football world, it don't fucking happen. I mean, you, a year after year, we watch the BCS power. But you're rankings. still trying to bump Ohio State from two out to five and move Michigan from five into four. Why yeah. wouldn't Ohio State just bump from two to four? Because they lost to Penn State. And Penn State would, if Penn State would. would but, uh, but Michigan lost to Ohio State. Mm, the, but I think the Penn State game. Versus uh, Wash or uh, Wisconsin would override that. That's their conference right. championship. Well, no, game. but but they're jumping into the fourth spot. So Michigan's the team that's not making it still. I think Penn State, oh, Clemson would probably move to number two. Ohio State bumps down to number five. You see, Penn State move to number three, and Michigan move into number four. Man, you're just putting your dick in Ohio State's potatoes. 
get it out of the potatoes and knock it off. <laughs> you know, I guess Ohio State probably deserves to be in the playoffs no matter what. They've only lost one yeah. game. But I right. think at the and same it was time, the Penn you State who's valid, in the conference championship. I think, well, exactly. I think if I think if Penn State beats Wisconsin, who they've already beat Ohio State, they deserve to be in the playoffs. Yeah, well, and if right. Washington loses, that's another two loss team. They've got to go. They cannot stay in the playoffs. Right. Well, no, Washington bumps out and Penn State takes their spot. That's what I think would happen. In Ohio, it, does Ohio move down then to three? Um. I don't know if they move down or not. I don't know. That doesn't even matter to me. Because if, well, you're, in, if you're in, you're in. Because in playoffs, you, number one plays number four, and number two plays number three. So I right, but you got to beat everybody to win anyway. Well, I know, but I but that could be – I've so you got to look at this, though. Like So if Alabama ends up playing Penn State, that's number four, one and four, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that, oh, Alabama wins that game. But I think if Ohio State, you know, plays – gets bumped down – to four, you know, to four, then I think you see a better. I think I just like to see that. I like to see Alabama play Ohio State for the first playoff game, and I'd like to see Penn State play Washington or Michigan, whoever, or Clemson, and then I'd like to see in the end I'd like to see Penn State play Ohio State again for the national title. That'd be a fucking yeah, awesome. Way I don't to think go. that would happen, but you I never don't think know. so either. I think Alabama's yeah. probably gonna win this year, but but we'll see I think they'll have a. I think they got a steady team they got to play against though to get in there so. oh well and that's why it's all like when you talk about the, those four teams all of them are solid so no matter how they're seated and you got to win you know two games to win so you know however the however the dice roll you play, you play but all you right, had, let's you write get... this down so I think we let's see let me get some fucking paper here who who so who do you think's gonna win on set on who, tomorrow. Who do I think is gonna win? So when the dust um, settles, um, who we got in the playoffs and what's their rank? Because it matters to me who the ranking is because they got that's who they're gonna play. I think, I think the four teams that are in there right now are probably gonna be in because I think Washington's gonna win. I think Clemson's gonna win, and Ohio State's not playing, and I think Alabama's gonna win. So I think that you know what we're talking about probably won't matter. Because the four teams that are already one, two, three, and four are all going to stay where they are. I need to get a whiteboard so people can see what we're doing back here. <laughs> so we right. got, That's we right. got a. So you think? So who's number one when the dust settles on Saturday? Alabama. Alabama. Okay. Who's yeah. number two? Well, um. Because I think that's probably, a key. I think that that's the number two. I think it's going to stay Ohio State. Okay, Ohio because State. they're not doing it. Yeah, they're not doing anything to drop. So I don't see people. If dropping. Penn State wins, you don't think they drop one spot? No, because Penn State's still a two-loss team. Okay. Uh, who thinks number three, Clemson? Yeah. And you think Washington stays? Yeah, I think that they'll beat Colorado and they'll stay number four, and then it'll make all the stuff we just said insignificant. Yes. Well, all right. So I say Alabama's number one. I say I don't know. I think if Clemson wins, I think they go to the number two spot. I think Ohio State will probably go to number three, and I think Washington loses. So I say Colorado beats Washington, and that Penn State gets that last spot. Yeah. So, so that would make Alabama play Penn State and Clemson play Ohio. So. Which I would rather fucking see Ohio drop to number four. That would be because <laughs> I want to see Ohio State play <laughs> Alabama first off the bat. Well, they might play in the title game. I know, but I don't want to see them. I want Ohio. I want one of those teams gone before the title game. So I don't want them to be the title. Oh, no, jeez. So the Notre Dame fan hates. <laughs> that's, what, that's what's going on here. The Notre Dame bias. The the Irish Catholicism is coming out. Oh my God. All right, okay. So we better move on. What's next? Yeah. Well, let's hit. Well, let's stay with college football just real quick to hit okay. on these coaches. Okay. So I don't. I don't know much about cover. the coaching situation. Okay. Yeah, I jotted down some notes for myself. So I'll hit the notes, and you just kind of tell me what you think, and we'll let listeners kind of know or viewers kind of know what's going on. So this week, Tom Herman, the coach of Houston, who I think is. Was he 24 and four or something in the last two years? He's been a monster coach for Houston. Um, So he has been hired by Texas, which opened up the Houston job. 
So Houston now is supposedly looking at West Virginia's Dana Holgerson, Alabama's offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, former Oakland Raider coach, terrible coach for the Raiders, but I think he's a good OC. Uh, Former LSU coach, Les Miles. LSU is going to keep Eddie O, Eddie Orgeron, and then Oregon turned around and fired Mark Helfrich, and they probably should have. He had a shitty year. And now but they're going to start like, a coach and search. It's not like a horrible year after year. I mean, he had a pretty good year last no, year. No, but he was he was 4 and 8 at Oregon in the Pac-12. I mean, Colorado won 10 games in this in this conference. Nothing <laughs> against Colorado, but Oregon has been on the national scale now for for some time. So if you look in the Pac-12, Colorado's around here and Oregon's up here. And so when it shifts, normally that means a coach gets his head taken off. So now that coach is gone. And uh, and so my question about that, which I know was one of the rumors that was started before I could pose this question. I thought I could be the first one to pose the rumor. But uh, so would Chip Kelly leave the 49ers and, and pro football to go back home to University of Oregon, where he had much success, where Nike built that entire new like weight room, nutrition room, all these things when he was their coach. Um. And he's seen in the NFL, his shit doesn't coached, work. Co- Chip Kelly coached at Oregon, huh? Oh yeah, Before he was. He, he was awesome. Notre Dame. Yeah, he was awesome. He was there. The, like he was their coach when they were going to, like the national title game okay. when they were doing all that. Okay. Yep. I guess I don't. I don't know why I didn't put that together. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm Chip Kelly, I would probably leave the dysfunctional 49ers and go back home to Oregon. Now I know he may not want to do that because he may want to have success at the highest level. But I think he should take a lesson from Nick Saban, who screwed the pooch with the Miami Dolphins, went back to college, and has really run shit ever since. So, I mean, if I'm Chip Kelly, I go back to Oregon. Well, the coach did it too, you know. He left um, pro and went back and coached several successful programs at the University Mm -hmm. of South Carolina. So, yeah, the old ball coach. He wasn't a good head coach in the NFL either. Sometimes you're just better at one thing than the other. I think, though, yeah. I think that's an exception to that because of how his style of coaching is. So, I don't know. Well, I think it's just like Harbaugh is one of those rare guys that is successful in both places. Um, but I think dealing with a professional athlete, a person who is paid to do something, versus a student athlete is a significantly different thing. I agree. I, so, I think they, the college people probably have – they look up to you more than the pros do. Yeah. I well, and, a and you know, there's respect. no salary cap. So Jim Harbaugh can recruit parade All-Americans every year. So his second team is right about on par with his first team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas in the NFL, his bench is oh, down here, and he's got some <laughs> general manager who's making the decisions, not him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's a lot different. Yeah. So – one more so thing about one, college ball, though. So, yeah. Clemson's going to play big rival Virginia Tech, too. I don't mm-hmm. want to, like, just displace that Virginia Tech's not going to beat Clemson. I think there's a viable chance for that. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. Nine and three, Virginia Tech? Maybe pulls as a, a current As a certain a South upset? Carolina resident, Clemson is not going to be upset by Virginia Tech. You need to pick a side in South Carolina, and you have picked the wrong side, sir. Clemson. Hey, Clemson. My, my daughter likes orange better. Oh my God! What and, the fuck? And my my alum. I'm not buying your Mar- daughter a Christmas Maryland, present this year. I'm Maryland no longer plays Clemson, so I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna she buy can her like Clemson if she wants. Send her to her. And Deshaun Watson's a fucking monster. So I'm gonna go dig out my Gamecocks fan hat and I'm gonna wear it in one of these shows. Oh, my brother's huge... got some Gamecock shit too from when he was stationed down here at a, at a Marine Air Base in Buford. But that shit don't matter to me. <laughs> wow, the double fingers from Bo. Excuse him. That, Excuse that shit him. don't matter to me. <laughs> Excuse him. You know, <laughs> I look at the talent, and the talent's on the Clemson side, so they're gonna win. No, I think they have a big chance of winning, but I think that I think there's always a room for, you know, I, what happens if Virginia Tech wins that game? Well, I got no real skin in that fight, so it doesn't matter to me. But I'm just saying, I don't think it's gonna happen. So what happens then if Clemson and Washington lose? Who comes in? Then Michigan and whoever wins the Big 12 could probably come in. You know, I mean, if you're asking me, I'm thinking that basically Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State or Wisconsin, which would be fucking crazy 
because it would be three teams from the same conference would be in there with Alabama. That's how the old SEC used to be, you know, with the big. Yeah, yeah. It always was like fucking, you know, SEC teams playing for the BCS Bowl. Right. Except well, I back think with, in the Florida, Florida State days. Oh, yeah. I think with Urban Meyer and Jim Harbaugh at, at Michigan and Ohio State, like those schools are going to be like they were with Bo Schimbecker and Woody Hayes there. You know what I mean? Like, like they're always going to be up near the top. And then Penn State is kind of an upstart school this year. And then Wisconsin, they've always been kind of a solid program. They just never really get over the hump. So I think they got over the hump this year. Yeah, they look really good this year. They look really good. All right, so we for real had better move on. Yep, last thing about sports. Your Dallas Cowboys are playing the Minnesota Vikings right now as we speak. Yep, and they're going to so. win. They're going to be 10. Dak, you my boy. <laughs> yeah, so you don't think the Viking defense can derail the Zeke no. and Dak show, huh? No, I don't think so. I don't no, think so. I, I tend to agree with you. I think you're right. Um, but I, I don't think that uh, that Dak will have the great kind of games he's been having. Um, I think it'll be more of a grounded, pounded out kind of thing. And uh, just to break your heart momentarily. Oh, I know they're losing right now. Three yeah, nothing. Cur- currently they're down a field goal in the second quarter. So. <laughs> it'll be all right. It'll yeah. be a good game. Well, I think it'll be a good game no matter what. Yeah, I mean, on the bright side for you, their best receiver, Stephon Diggs, Maryland alum, is, uh, is banged up. Adrian Peterson's been out since week one, so their running game is fairly non-existent in Minnesota. Sam Bradford is made out of crystal or china because <laughs> he gets broken every time he gets hit hard. We used to, and, we uh, we have one of those on the Dallas Cowboys team. We don't, you know, we we've yeah, we've moved Roma on. has become we've moved Roma on. has become. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, those guys with the collarbones and the knees and everything else. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, I, I, you know, I think things look right for you guys to win this game. I will say, though, you just have an average defense. So if Bradford gets hot and he hits a couple plays and they're able to kind of – because they have a really good defense, able to kind of hold down your offense, then you never know. It could be your Virginia Tech-Clemson thing there. It could be. It could be. So – Hopefully you guys aren't playing Dak or any of the uh, any of the Cowboys other than maybe Zeke Elliott, who who will probably get a touchdown or two tonight if you're a fantasy footballer, because it doesn't look like uh, like Dak and those guys are going to have a big night. The Minnesota defense looks like they got the clamps on them early. Still got two quarters to play. So. Yeah, yeah, true enough. But again, you are right now they got the clamps. You want me to be wrong so bad about the Dallas? No, Cowboys. I don't. I you think the Cowboys are going to win. You want me to no, be so I, wrong about this? I think they're going to win. <laughs> I, I just think that for fantasy football purposes, people are better off having those particular guys on their bench. Um, we didn't get to this early enough to say that, but, you know, uh, I just don't think that against the Vikings defense, that's not the best play. So, you know, play Zeke Elliott because he's going to get 20 to 25 carries and he's running behind the best offensive line in football. But I don't know that you want to play other skill players. I remember when I made my prediction before the season started. After it was after the what we had three losses in the um, preseason. In the preseason, people looked at me <laughs> like I was the craziest motherfucker on the face of the earth. They were like, "You are nuts!" And I'm gonna go collect on all my money after this win tonight because I had several bets that Dallas would not make it to ten wins. So I'm gonna go get my money tomorrow morning from a lot of people after they beat the Minnesota Vikings tonight. You should if you if people made that bet with you. You should. Oh, I don't know why they'd make that bet. They told you guys me were twelve win team two years ago. Impossible for Dallas to win ten games this year. So, huh. I think I'm yeah I'm gonna be in, in glorious fashion in the morning when I go around and get all my monies. <laughs> you should. You should. All right. So on to a little sadder news. Um, we need yeah. to talk about this Ohio State shooting that happened. Mm-hmm. Well, stabbing uh, and car driving. Yes. Yes. Well, um, shooting by the police officer. I mean, the police officer shot the shot the Somalian uh, yeah. refugee guy. So you know, a headline that I saw the other day that was like shocking to me was like, "ISIS strikes in Ohio," 
And mm -hmm. I don't know that it's been confirmed, right? That it was. It has not been confirmed that it was ISIS. So and this leads me back to my whole: we need to start a news organization that does not promote. Like that's fucking false flag shit, is what that shit right. is. Right. Right. So now it has been confirmed that he he was Muslim, and he had posted like some um some in doctrine that you know he wanted Muslims saved and and like some jihad kind of things but it was not islamic state stuff it was just you know kind of radical islam that would be like if somebody you know said that because they wore a swastika and you know posted a bunch of neo-nazi stuff around and they and th that the neo-nazis had done this you know like you, that's not right. the, the, you people acting alone I, my big point is that People don't need to read a news headline and then go post a bunch of shit on social media. You know, oh, ISIS is in the fucking U.S. and they're doing this crazy shit. Because it's just not true, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, they may be. I'm sure there's lots of terrorist sects who are in the U.S. doing shit. Well, yeah, I agree with that. But I'm just saying that but I, I don't think that not, this is not, it's not true. At, yeah, it's not true at this point that this particular incident is ISIS-related. Yeah. Now, it is Islamic-related because the gentleman happen to practice Islam. Yeah. Um, but that, again, doesn't mean all Muslims are terrorists. It doesn't mean doesn't, everybody who's Islamic people need is going to gonna try to hurt you. It's such, a, it's such a small amount of radical Muslims. There's not a huge number of them. They're just not. Yeah. It's the same in the U.S. It's like saying that all, US, that all uh, you know, Americans are rednecks. That's just not true. It's a very small or, sect of Or the radical American. Christians, you know. Exactly. It's not, there's not a bunch. There's just not... Not every single Muslim that you meet is wanting to, you know, do a jihad on you and, you know, and kill you. It's just not, that's not true. Right. So, Yeah, I have some Muslim friends up in Maryland. Wonderful people. Yes. I, I would trust them to have my daughter without me around. I would, you know, I would trust them to be in my home. I would trust being in their home, spending the night with each other, you know. Uh, my one man, Imran, used to hook me up with some sneaker discounts. Appreciate it. <laughs> There you go. So, you know, and it's a tragedy what happened. But, you know, they did immediately get the, the guy who did it. So, um, I've got to fly here in the studio. Jesus Christ. And I uh, don't. You want me to swat it for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go fuck yourself. So, you know, and uh, our hearts That's go out to those motion. affected there in Ohio State. So, we wish everybody a, a smooth and quick recovery there. I know it'll probably be a yeah. while, but um, and no no severe injuries in that from you know all reports. So you know just get better. Um, I'm sure psychologically, maybe the injuries are more severe than physically. So all right, so moving on here, let's see. We talked about the North Dakota protest. So and then uh, this whole carrier plant thing with Trump. Got any thoughts on oh, that? Yeah. Well, I just read, I think the Wall Street Journal reported that they gave Carrier $7 million to save those jobs in, uh, in Indian, Indiana tax breaks. But, um, I mean, you know, good for saving jobs, you know. Uh, Trump is fortunate in that he comes from the business side of things. And so even as a representative of the government, when he gets involved in business, people don't say, oh, the government's overstepping their bounds. Like, what if Obama had gone to a private business and kind of bullied them into, into doing something that they were saying they didn't want to do? I feel like it would be a different, uh, oh, absolutely, like a different, different response. You know what I mean? People respect Trump as a businessman, you know? Yeah. Obama's so, not known don't... for his, his years and years of being a, a financial mongol, you know? Right, right. But nobody screams big government, even though the government strongly influenced what was going on. Yeah. Because Trump did it. So. And I would almost argue that, you know, I don't think that Trump had a lot. Like, I don't think it was all Trump. So. Oh, no. I'm sure it was a lot. Probably more Mike Pence. Yeah. Because the state of Indiana is the one That's doing the, the state, tax yeah. kickback. Right. Right. So I'm sure it's much more him. Um, I would say, in general, it's pretty fucking cool that the president negotiated saving american jobs i agree whether or not that's possible to do and sustain over his presidency that's different but it's pretty fucking cool that it happened at this moment yeah 
I think that, you know, I, I hope this, this kind of stuff continues. You know, it'll do nothing but yeah. help Trump and his, you know, I think the first two years will help set a precedence for, you know, um, him getting reelected possibly. And, and in, in, in essence, keeping Republicans in the House and the Senate the way they are. Um, I, I also read today, I didn't really know, I didn't really know this, but a lot of um, governors got swapped too. There are a lot of Republican governors won governorships in the mm -hmm. election too. So I think if Trump has a successful two years, then um, I think well, he has four successful years. Uh, yeah, I think those first two years would be critical though when it comes midterms. Yeah. So yeah, oh, probably so. Um, but uh, you know, success for Trump, like the guy or not, means success for America. So if for no other reason than to kind of get behind this, you know as an american citizen the success of our country is important to all of us i would i would hope so yeah. you know and then those those folks at, at carrier who were able to keep their 20 to 25 dollar an hour jobs had those jobs gone away even though carrier was going to leave them with packages and was going to help re-educate them i could tell you my first job out of college paid me 985 an hour so they would have still been far from that 20 to 25 dollars an hour salary that they had no matter what carrier had put into place for them you know what i mean yeah so i mean saving those jobs is significant even though it's small scale on a on a global impact kind of kind of i think they'd probably rather keep their jobs than get a a benefits package or a oh yeah so all right so what do you think you know i think trump is supposedly he nominated somebody for secretary of defense today right yeah, the Marine General, right? Yeah, that older dude, right? So what are your thoughts on that? I'm all right with it. Yeah? Yep. And that bitch Megyn Kelly, she's going to leave. I think she's going to leave Fox News. You heard oh, about that? why has Megyn Kelly got to be a bitch? I don't like Megyn Kelly. And she's no. involved in a system that I think has just failed the American people and does not work. And that would be the mega news corporations, so... I think yeah. anybody involved in that shit is like they're a farce. Like that's my opinion about it. I don't think they're honest people or, at all. Okay, so you know maybe a farce, but I felt like a bitch was kind of strong. I mean, did she really do anything <laughs> to you? Not me personally, but she's part of the train that just needs to be shut down. So I'm not a you know no I'm no I don't, I'm not apologizing about that. I don't think that you no. know. Oh, maybe... you can call her a bitch if you want. I'm just saying that's not my. <laughs> Bo is uh, fucking trying to cover his ass right now. <laughs> no, I, you know, I just, I feel like that's pretty strong language. Just because you don't feel like somebody is as good a newscaster as maybe they should. I don't think that it has anything to do with her newscasting ability. I think that she's part of the train, a system that just does not work and lies to the American people on a daily basis. Isn't and that I, her newscasting? No, I, I think that you know somebody can be good at their job and be a bitch. Like I think that's you know I think that that can be right. But it, your point though is that she's not telling us the real news, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's her newscast. I think that's more like her integrity. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just we're saying the same thing in two different ways. I think. Okay. I right, go. So uh, I guess we'll, she's we'll, a pretty girl though, so I'm yeah, sure she'll she's, find she's something a very good to do. Beautiful woman, and yep. so she makes the jump. So I'm sure she'll be welcome there. So I guess a little bit back into sports. That fight last week at the Miami San Francisco football team. Oh yeah, you see yeah. that shit? I did. I did. You're Dolphins fans, man. They're violent. I'm not a Dolphins fan, <laughs> but yeah. No, I mean you're from Miami though. Yeah, I am from Miami. Yeah. Your don't home come, crowd. don't come, don't bring them fucking West Coast liberals into our stadium and try to say something. Hey, you know? <laughs> what what happened to Will Smith's Miami? I mean, he was welcome to Miami. He was all happy and shit. Where's that Miami? I, I don't know. Have you ever been to that stadium? It's not a, in a very good place in town. <laughs> no, I've I've heard those rumors, but no, I haven't been to that stadium. <laughs> it's it's a sketchy area. Miami is time to build a new stadium on the other side of town, closer to Fort Lauderdale. You heard it here. Right, good plan. <laughs> Um, so yeah, a little, little scuffle at the Miami San Francisco game last Sunday. So, all right. So let's see. 
little tech news real quick. We'll just run it down. Um, the I get Black Friday's over, Cyber Monday's over. This is, I guess, consi- they've they've done everything they can to extend this Black Friday business. They've got Cyber Week going on now. So, mm, I think tablets were a big hit. Um, people spent they 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 spent a bunch of money. So, it was a good year. Or a good shopping season, I guess. Um, so I was wrong. I, th- I thought people would spend less money. I told year. you. I don't know. I was They're wrong. worried about civil rights, not economy. <laughs> this is true. So people spent a bunch of money this year. Good for you guys. So, um, And then uh, it looks like Nokia may uh, shake things up. You know, everybody remembers Nokia phones. Everybody had one of the candy bar style phones from back in the day. Um, you know, they, drug dealers still want those phones because they don't have SIM cards. They, they don't have GPS. So anybody that has phones. those old phones, you could get on like eBay and some other places. We do not promote I, drug trafficking. I bet some. I'm not show. saying. I'm not saying. <laughs> sell, I'm saying sell your Nokia phone to somebody who might want to purchase it from you. I've got a fucking shoebox full of them. <laughs> there you go, Doc. I like them. They're good phones. They never fucking broke. That was the thing I liked about them. And they always fucking worked. I never had a drop call. I don't think ever on a Nokia phone. So. But they, they uh, so. They probably owned all the fucking towers. <laughs> a couple years ago, they, Nokia sold most of their stuff to Microsoft, who in turn um, branded the phones Lumias and sold them on the Windows phone or Windows mobile network platform. Um, so, but Nokia is looking to get back in the game. Um, so I think you'll see they're going to come out with an Android style phone. And I think you'll see them steal the market shares. Um, some of them from Apple and, uh, Motorola. Right. So yeah, Samsung. I think there'll be an entry level phone. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's the way places can work their way back in. they will be like the, uh, the, the Hondas of, of cell phones. I think it's a good move for Nokia. They made they people oh, yeah, know them sure. for being a solid product. So mm-hmm. if they come out with an affordable, good phone, which I don't understand how why phones are so goddamn expensive to begin with. You know, a new iPhone years. costs eight to nine hundred dollars. When you can go to Japan and buy the same goddamn iPhone for two hundred dollars. So it's like it's like medicine. It, we don't want to go pharmaceutical. Yeah, let's we'll we'll save that for another time. <laughs> We don't want to go. We could talk about big that for fucking eight hours. And then, but um, on the last show we talked briefly about using ecstasy for PTSD, right? Yeah. So, I I do want to say this about Big Farm. So ecstasy can be created through chemicals by man. So they got behind that pretty quick, right? Ecstasy has been around, you know, that I know of since the mid nineties. That that it was around when I was a teenager. So. Pot's been around a long fucking time, but you don't make that in a lab chemically. So these motherfuckers have kept it out of our hands for all this time. Look how quick the FDA is probably going to put ecstasy on the menu for PTSD care. What do you think about that? You know, you, de- you, de- you deal in that more than I do. What do you think about um, So, in my opinion, is not based on my own experience. But so the, the Charleston VA has psychiatrists who, I'm, who I know of. And psychiatrists who I work with work with them. And they've said that it, it has shown to be very successful. So I'm all for another, you know, bullet in the chamber to treat a severe mental illness like PTSD. Now, is it so, ecstasy like people know it or is it a different form of it? No, it's like just it's basically like people know it. Um, and what it is, though, it's only a certain number of doses. Oh, like a, it's a short term period of time that you take a certain number of doses. And supposedly it alleviates, you know, like symptoms to where people aren't diagnosed with PTSD in like 80% of cases or something. Like it's, it's really significant how helpful it can be. How addictive um, is it? Well, because they only dose for a short amount of times, it, it's not as habit forming as it could be. It's not a medicine that you're going to have to keep taking like a Prozac or something else. You're just going to take it in a short term life cycle. At least that's really the way it's set up. addictive though? I mean,. Um, I don't know that it really is. Like, I don't know anybody who's ever done ecstasy. I'll, I'll, done I'll ecstasy. say that. I'll tell you that. I've done it. But, I, you know, I've done it several times, and I don't think... I haven't done it in, oh, fuck, years. But, um, I don't, I don't ever felt like it was habit-forming, like some of the other stuff I've done. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know anybody, and I do substance abuse work right now. Nobody comes in to see me because they're hooked on ecstasy. I can say that. So, now what's the um, side effects of ecstasy, clinically? Um, to use you know a, offhand, it causes those dead spots in your brain. So it's it's got some uh, some brain cell that it kills. Uh, I don't know a lot more than that at this point. Um, I don't think that it functions like LSD, so I don't think you're going to have trips way after the fact that I've heard of. Uh, so I think the big thing is just um, the amount of usage and the way that it can affect your memory and your brain function, which is why, again, this, this study has been set up to provide a certain dosage over a short period of time. And, and, and it's not like a lifetime of medicine like you would take um, trazodone, uh, you know, Seroquel, any of those other kind of meds that they might put folks on that are kind of antipsychotics and things like that, yeah. where you have to keep taking them. This is you take it for this short period of time under your doctor's supervision, and then and then you're done with it, and your symptoms have been alleviated. What about, um, has there been any PTSD um, research done for, you know, medical marijuana or anything like that not that i know of um not that doesn't mean that it's not going on i just i haven't seen those studies do you right think now. that there'd be any benefit to it i uh, uh, probably so because they've seen a benefit with other um severe mental illnesses like schizophrenia and things like that do so, they use the thc side or do they just use what, what for in those the instances? cannabinoids yeah the cannabinoid um that i'm not certain that i'm not certain you know, because they use the non-THC version to treat epilepsy and seizures in small children. Yeah, where they roll it on their feet. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's if you people don't know, there's um, there's a bunch of documentaries. There's a, there's one in particular on Netflix. I cannot recall the name of it, but it's all about the medical marijuana and that there's a a, um, a single mother with her child that has seizures on there. That has uh, this was years ago when they when the documentary aired but she started using that um and they had to get it like it, they had to jump through all kinds of hoops and i think in the end basically they were getting this kid medicine illegally to treat her seizures because it had not been i don't know if it was the state she lived in or they wouldn't prescribe it to her um but in that documentary it was very compelling that it was, it was very evident too as well that that it was helping this young child where she was not having seizures anymore and it was the medical community was refusing to acknowledge that it was helping her so and you have these kids that you know they use that now where they've you know there's cases where kids had to take like 20 plus medications a day and now they're taking this one thing the non-thc side of marijuana and they're, they don't have any problems with seizures like it's been years since they've had seizures Right, and they don't have the crazy side effects or, or the price tag of taking all these medications. So, I think too. I think we should talk about um, maybe in the next show. Um, I've got a nephew that is, um, oh, what? How do you say it? he's autistic? I think we should probably. Del you know anything about autistic people? Not a lot. I know it's a spectrum disorder. Um, but I don't know a lot about it. I think there is I a lot of much with that because I haven't worked much in the schools with those kids. I think there is a lot of uh, I, I think there's a lot of misinformation about it. I, my so my nephew, he's got this. He has he's autistic. I saw him. He's I think he's ten now. He's ten years old, and he just got accepted to the University of Alabama. He's graduated high school already. So that's how smart that's this awesome. motherfucker is. So wow. When he was six, I think it was, say he was six, I went with my father. I'll just tell this quick little story. I went with my father, and my, my grandmother takes care of him due to some complications with the parents of my nephew. But anyways, my grandmother has full custody of him. We went with my grandmother to buy a new car. Um, so I'm sitting there in this dealership with this kid, and it was like one of the first times I had ever like been, spent a lot of time with him. And... Where we were at, they had this picture of the dis of the Discovery rocket, you know, the um, space shuttle that went, you know, that went into space. They had a big poster of it in there, and this kid proceeded to tell me how much fuel was in each one of those rockets, 
how much oh, shit. like the math involved in taking these rockets to sp- I was like and I I'm like an astronaut but like that's what I wanted to be when I was a kid and I'm you know I could I could not believe the amount of information that this 6 year old was telling me stuff that I would like I would have had to have researched you know he knew he knew every single p- crew member that had ever been on one of those things back to the wow. beginning you know and he understood like he verbally to- understood you could tell he understood the math and physics behind taking this thing into space and Jeez. you know and he's diagnosed he's an autistic kid really what i think though is you know i think that he has he, he, and so he gets aggravated really easily too he gets mm-hmm. frustrated um so he'll have these bur- outbursts you know and he doesn't he's almost uncontrollable but you know the kid's ten years old and he's gonna go to the University of Alabama. He's graduated high school already, so. It's Doogie Howser. Fucking amazing kid. I'm very proud of him. So. Yeah, you should be. That's awesome. Anyways, well, maybe we'll get into that in another show. But I think that that's that was yeah, something was cool shit. I needed to share. So. Yeah. I think that's about our time. The only other thing I wanted to hit real quick yeah. is Howard Schultz stepped down today as Starbucks CEO. I think that's big news. So. Old Howard Schultz. Good riddance. Well, and uh, <laughs> oh, he's he's you he saw what he's doing though, right? He's just moving over to another part of the company. Yeah, I did. So, um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, McGregor got licensed to box in California, so I think he's really stumping to to fight Floyd. Uh, so I don't know if there'll be a McGregor and a Mayweather fight or not. And in my opinion, McGregor probably doesn't really want that fight. I think he thinks he wants that fight, but I don't think he really wants that. I, I, I almost tend to agree with you. I, don't, I think he wants it in his mind, but I don't think he wants to get in the ring with him in real life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like I, mean, I think it'll take. I think in about Mayweather 10 seconds, is arguably he'll, know, he'll be like, "Oh shit, I made yeah. a mistake." <laughs> Mayweather is arguably the greatest defensive boxer that has ever lived. You know, you can say what you want about him being a boring fighter to watch or anything else you want to say, but W's he is a great though, defensive right? fighter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and money is money. <laughs> and Mayweather has the money. So uh, I think that Mayweather should just go ahead and get in the ring with him. Like let's just let's just settle this once and for all. Oh so. yeah. Just take they'll, they'll take all, like, all, like, all the money. money. I think yeah. Mayweather's ready to retire anyways, don't you? Like he's done everything. Yeah, he retired after he beat uh Pacquiao, after he beat right? Pacquiao the last time. Yep. Like just fucking fight him and get you'll know, make a fuck ton of money. You're gonna beat him. Like that would be the only thing that I think like if he doesn't fight him, I think everybody will think that he did that he wouldn't like he would think he didn't want to, he's not going to win. So, yeah, like that would be to me. He's still in his prime health. I don't think he's old. Well, if I'm if I'm Floyd, I would sign a contract to fight him, but I'd make him fight some other star fighter before he could fight me. Why now? Why would like, you do that? I'd be like, won't reason. you fight Pacquiao? Because then, if he can't fight him, then you still make the money under contract because you had him sign a contract with your with your fight. You know what I mean? Like I don't Oscar think De La Hoya had gold. Does that though? I say McGregor. He, I don't think he'll do that. So, if he wants to fight, he would do it. See, because and that's what that's all Mayweather has to say. Look, man, you've been fighting MMA. You haven't boxed nobody. Box. But, okay, somebody. so in boxing rules, though, like you can, there's like time limits, right? Like you can't fight Pacquiao and then a month later fight fucking. Mayweather, right? And they're like six. Don't they gotta wait a certain amount of time? Uh, I think it depends on like how like how beat up you get in a fight. Okay. But huh. I mean, th- you would just schedule them for six months apart. Yeah. Because you'd want to have a whole camp anyway. Yeah, you would. You would. So, but if I'm Mayweather, that's what I say. I'm like, look, you want to fight me? Who the fuck have you fought? You I know, think they should just fight fight, just fight somebody to earn your way up. <laughs> so you think this he has to earn right? his way up? Okay. I mean, you know, he's, like, he's, uh, gonna, he's gonna he's gonna chatter like he doesn't have to, but the reality is he hasn't fought nobody in boxing. He hasn't boxed shit. Has he ever had a professional boxing bout? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, he's got. I mean, he's got some stone hands. Don't get it twisted. But that doesn't oh, mean agree. that he can outbox the greatest defensive boxer that's maybe ever lived. I agree. All right. Well, we are way past our time. We need to get off here. That's right. All right, guys. So make sure you go out and like the Twitter page. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube now or if you're in the future, make sure you hit that like button or dislike button. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. We got Instagram, Kill Cobra Studios, um, Facebook, 
the same thing. I appreciate it if you like and share and comment on Facebook for us. Helps us out. Helps us keep shit free. Helps us pay the bills. Um, both myself and Bo have uh, Twitter accounts, Doc Holiday and Bo Machado. Respect. Right, follow it. Might right. see something interesting once in a while. Follow us there. We got all the social media shit, so make sure it's in the should be in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, hit us up. Um, send us. Uh, you can also email us if you got and uh, put comments in the video for show topics if you want us to see something. Yeah, let's be about. interactive. Talk, tell us what you want to hear and talk about, and we'll be glad to be glad to comply with you. Anyways, we thanks everybody for listening in tonight. I'm done. Bo, you got anything you want to say? Uh Thank you guys for listening. Uh, again, like all the like all the pages. Um, tell your friends to like all the pages. Yeah, that's right. Share, share the videos. The more you know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, and then that's it. Uh, I guess tune into something good on the television. That's right. We'll be back on so Monday. Check out the telly. Let me just get the date here real quick. We're back on Monday. Uh, December fifth, because um, on the sixth I turn forty. Oh, that's right, Bo's. Oh no, off. wait. Are we on? Yeah, we're on Monday, so we're gonna miss my birthday. Oh well, I'll be partying without you guys. <laughs> Anyways, think for yourself and question motherfucking everything, guys. We'll see you on Monday. Later. That's right. Catch you on the flip side.